Hey, I'm Strummer, dude, or matter. Whatever, I don't know. So I made that video about David Lynch's influence on games, but I apparently missed a few. Like a ton, so I'm gonna go back and cover them. If you haven't watched the first video, you probably should since I cover his story techniques more than that. So Twin Peaks was actually huge in Japan shortly after its cancellation. Travel agencies booked group trips to Washington so fans could get pics of themselves wrapped in plastic on the town's beaches, thousand stage funeral services for Laura Palmer, the movie Firewalk With Me premiered earlier in Japan than the States, and Lynch even filmed these Japanese canned coffee commercials. Damn fine coffee, right? Right. It's true. I doubt it. So it makes sense why so many Japanese developers seem to incorporate Lynch into their games, like Hideo Kojima having Metal Gear Solid Sniper Wolf recite the lines from Blue Velvet, or Human Entertainment looking to Twin Peaks' premise to tell their small-town American mystery story in Mizerna Falls. The game simply uses the show as a basis, leaving behind the supernatural elements in favor of something more grounded. Missing teenage girl in a mountain town, a James Hurley-esque main character who's caught in a sort of love triangle with the missing girl and her best friend, a school tough guy who dates a waitress at the local diner. There's even a singer in the town named Isabella, which, along with her blue dress, is a nod to Isabella Rosalini's character in Blue Velvet. The inconspicuous but ultimately corrupt small American town is a major fixture of the Mother series. Shigeru Miyamoto himself compared Earthbound's colorful cast of characters to those of Twin Peaks. However, the show wasn't a noted influence on the series until Mother 3. During a mushroom trip on Tain Tain Island, the party encounters friends and family as nightmarish doppelgangers, a major element of Twin Peaks' Black Lodge and Lynch stories as a whole the duality representing schisms in personality. In describing its feel, claustrophobic and unnerving, director Shikasato Itoi said he was watching Twin Peaks at the time. Though its connections to Nintendo's RPG classic may seem minor, Twin Peaks and David Lynch had a profound effect on another JRPG series, Persona. The series revolves around characters who can summon personas, representations of their true selves. Characters obtain these summons at the otherworldly Velvet Room. The curtains and names scream Blue Velvet, while the zigzag floor panel and all-knowing little person scream Twin Peaks. The Lynchian duality theme really showed up when Katsura Hashino took over as director with Persona 3. Along with placing the Velvet Room between consciousness and unconsciousness, the world shifts between two realms, the normal reality during the day and the alternate demon-infested reality at night. Persona 4 splintered character identities further by making the personas more explicit of their host's true identity. For example, a flamboyant persona juxtaposes their host's macho attitude, possibly indicating his repressed sexuality. The idea of a true self is akin to Naomi Watts' character in Mulholland Drive, who imagines herself saving a damsel when in reality she paid for her assassination. Hashino actually made his team sit down and watch the film. Uh, they didn't like it. Hashino went on to make Catherine, which also plays with dualities. Caught in a troubled relationship, our lead, Vincent, cheats on his fiancée, Catherine with a K, with a succubus, Catherine with a C, who represents everything he looks for in a woman. Like Laura and Maddie from Twin Peaks, the two women share physical dichotomies, namely their hair and eye color. He also deals with his marital trouble as Agent Dale Cooperwood confronting them in his dreams. In the horror game Siren, the people of a cursed Japanese village are forced to choose between becoming trapped underwater as pure entities or become immortal as the evil Shibito, or corpse people. The villagers turn via the titular Siren. Developer Kiyashiro Toyama borrowed the idea from Lynch's stark and bombastic short film Industrial Symphony No. 1. Toyama previously used the sound in the original Silent Hill, which he also directed. In my last video, I talked about the upcoming Silent Silent Hills, which I guess doesn't have a director anymore, as well as the general premise of the series, the town adapting to the character's subconscious, but the series owes so much to Lynch. Since he wasn't a fan of the genre, Toyama based much of the horror elements on Twin Peaks and David Lynch's other work. The original follows Harry Mason as he searches for his daughter in Silent Hill. We soon learn the small American town is controlled by cultists, and its roaming demons are influenced by the nightmares of a girl named Alessa Gillespie. The town also shifts to an industrial and hellish otherworld. The concept has shades of Twin Peaks' Black Lodge, a little bit of the warped reality of Lost Highway, and a good helping of the hallucinations of the film Jacob's Ladder, which is definitely the biggest non-Lynch influence on the game. Akira Yamaoka, the series' composer, named Lynch's musical partner Angelo Badalamenti as an influence for his work. 
And as I said before, Lynch's industrial symphony inspired the game's ominous siren. Masashi Tsuboyamo took over directorial duties on Silent Hill 2 and continued using Lynch as a reference. The lead, James Sunderland, receives a letter from his dead wife, requesting him to meet her at Silent Hill. Once there, he meets Maria, a doppelganger of Mary, played by the same actress. In addition to the town's otherworld, guilt and sexual desire manifesting themselves into demons, and the Blue Velvet-esque nightclub Heaven's Night, James watches a videotape depicting himself killing Mary, not unlike Bill Pullman's character in Lost Highway. Silent Hill 3 continues the story and feel of the original, the main character Heather being a reincarnation of Alessa. She even has to battle the memory of Alessa, which appears as her doppelganger. Unlike the David Fincher feel of Silent Hill 2, the third returns to the industrial underworld with a Lynchian twist. The shift between realms is often indicated through something innocuous, like the turning of a valve. It's similar to Twin Peaks' ceiling fan, which indicates spirits from the Black Lodge, like Killer Bob, are entering reality. The game also thematically connects to Lynch's Blue Velvet. The character Douglas Carthland says a world without paradoxes would be stagnant and worthless. It makes sense then that both Silent Hill and Twin Peaks were huge influences on the zombie apocalypse game Lone Survivor. Along with the little nods like coffee and blue velvet curtains, the game's style is pure lynch. Developer Jasper Byrne's abstract nightmare is a metaphor to be unraveled, all its small details deriving from an external reality and hinting at a deeper story not about zombies. In addition, Byrne said the sound design, building from a single droning note to a grinding mess, was inspired by Twin Peaks and Mulholland Drive. He also noted Lynch's ability to mix jazz and comedy with horror. Lost Highway, Blue Velvet, Twin Peaks, and Inland Empire all come to mind. Oh, also the characters Lynchian, like everything else in the game. In my last video, I mentioned Lynch may be attractive to game designers because of non-linear stories like Lone Survivor. Game critic turned scriptwriter Tom Bissell once said game stories should maybe forget about linear story structure. He went on to co-write The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. Players control a paranormal detective searching for the missing Ethan. He does so by exploring a mountain town and rebuilding past events. The story that unfolds shares some similarities to Twin Peaks. Namely, Ethan's family becoming possessed by a supernatural entity that turns them against the child. Creative director Adrian Khmiraj said that like Twin Peaks, all the small details in the dreamlike and nonlinear story have a point. Many speculate the story is something thought up by Ethan as he burns alive, his family always disapproving of his writing and coming up short in supporting him. Small details like the burnt edges of memories and a fake wooden spaceship imagined as the real thing support this game theory. But it's just a theory. Strumon Studios cyberpunk themed I Divine Cybermancy also has a chaotic story design meant to be pieced together like a puzzle. The developers named Lynch's Dune, Twin Peaks, and Mulholland Drive as inspirations. The stylized campaign where reality is never assured, has been theorized to be a dream anchored upon the main character's guilt, essentially the premise of Mulholland Drive. The Longest Journey is a series that forces you to question whether you're in a dream or not. The series' second title, Dreamfall, features dream machines that are used to put people in comatose states. In addition, the game's world is split between two distinct halves, a futuristic cyberpunk city and a sword and sorcery fantasy setting. The Surreal series, which is in the middle of an episodic third entry, was heavily influenced by Lynch, its lead designer Ragnar Tornquist being a major fan. Unlike all of these nightmarish games that take place in people's minds, Tim Schafer's Psychonauts explicitly does so with a smile and a wink. Players control Raz, a telepathic boy who infiltrates unstable psyches, battling their fears and alleviating their emotional baggage. Schaefer's favorite director is David Lynch, who he referenced in Day of the Tentacle, and for Psychonauts, he looked to Eraserhead for inspiration. The film's hyper-realized setting is as much an acute representation of Philly circa 1977 as it is the crippling paranoia and fear of a soon-to-be father. As fantastical a premise as it is, Psychonauts taps into the wonder and nostalgia of summer camp as well as the heart of the characters through their mental scars. Henry's head toppling off and being made into eraser heads would totally fit in Psychonauts. Another surreal horror comedy is Telltale's Puzzle Agent. Controlling a bubbling FBI agent, the player investigates the mysterious Minnesota town of Scoggins, eventually discovering the Hidden People, a cult of red gnomes. Both the game's lead designer Mark Darren and artist Graham Annable identified Twin Peaks as a major template to the uneasy atmosphere of the town. Annable even made an amazing tribute piece to Lynch. Also, Scoggins' major industry 
manufacturing erasers. This small town American theme harkens back to Lynch's childhood growing up in a very idealistic, back to the future style neighborhood. Bioshock Infinite very much taps into that setting. The original city of Rapture possessed the aesthetics of a horror game, so when the setting shifted to Infinite Sun Bleach Columbia, director Ken Levine looked to Stanley Kubrick's The Shining and David Lynch's Blue Velvet. Both stir up a feeling of dread with the lights on, specifically in Blue Velvet when Kyle MacLachlan's character finds a severed ear in some dirt, leading him down a dark rabbit hole. Hitman Absolution is another sequel that looked toward Lynch to revitalize series hallmarks. Its designer Tor Blystad mentioned the professional in James Bond as early influences, but wanting strong and strange antagonists, the team channeled Twin Peaks and Wild at Heart. Another developer heavily indebted to the film industry is David Cage. Though often criticized for it, the developer purposefully tries to create cinematic stories through the lens of gaming. Cage was so enamored by Angelo Badalamenti's score for Lost Highway and Twin Peaks, he pegged the composer to make a filmic score for Indigo Prophecy. Also, Doom was one of the many films that influenced the game. So yeah. That's a lot of games. In my last video, I mentioned the unreleased Virginia as an example of Lynch's continued influence, but I left off some other unreleased games, but what the hell, right? They're funded. They're practically done. <laughs> Dropsy focuses on an unsettling looking clown following a tragic fire at his family's circus tent. Along with its surreal atmosphere, where characters communicate with symbols like in Firewalk With Me, the game illustrates its Lynchian influence with a dream world. Dropsy can find clues in these dreams in the same manner as Twin Peaks' Dale Cooper. Consequently, a Halloween-themed teaser called Dropsy in the Black Lodge features a remix of the show's main theme, zigzag panels, red curtain rooms, and the phrase, the owls are not what they seem. A few surreal horror games acknowledge Lynch as a major influence, like Darkwood, Silvio, Tangiers, Grave, and The Black Glove. Finally, as with their former colleague Tim Schafer, developers Ron Gilbert and Gary Winnick are fans of Lynch, so much so that their upcoming revitalization of old school adventure games, Thimbleweed Park, is a satirical send-up of Twin Peaks and the X-Files. The story begins when two washed-up detectives investigate a body on the outskirts of a small town. And Jesus Christ, that's not all. Here's a list of games that reference Lynch. If I missed any games, just let me know in the comments and I'll annotate them here. But regardless, it's not only amazing to see how many games Lynch influenced, but just how significant they are. Braid, Link's Awakening, Silent Hill, these are huge games, which is pretty cool.